Hello paper crafters, welcome to another Design with Joe video. I'm Joanne Rogers, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada, and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. Today I want to show you how to emboss with brush roll crystal colors and create great backgrounds. So you need your brush roll crystal colors and these are in the annual catalog and there are five colors in a set. And uh, one of the things you want to do is you don't want to take these little lids off. You want to just put a push pin into the uh, crystal color, just one, you only need one hole and that's going to seal them when they're not in use and you'll see me tap them out when we're about to use them in just a minute. You're going to need your Versamark, a stamp that has uh, words on it that are fairly large, and I'll get to that more in a minute. You need your spritzer, you need some painter's tape, and I would actually recommend the blue one. Um, the, it's not going to be quite as tacky as the green one. You need a piece of watercolor paper that is three and three quarters by five, and you need one of your standard cutting mats from your Big Shot. Uh, one that is going to be in fairly good shape in that it's nice and straight still and it's not uh, cut into uh, using the uh, Big Shop and the dies. So we're using watercolor paper because I find that gives me the best results with this crystal color. I really like how it blends and how it um, um, changes lightness with the water that you add. So what we're going to do first of all is we are going to stamp and you want to stamp because we are only doing uh, one image on here and the rest is going to be the crystal color background you are going to stamp with a larger word stamp and so what I'm using so I've just stamped that with Versamark ink right now and put it onto my watercolor paper but I'm using the rooted in nature set so this is a double stamp set let me bring in the other one here which still has the elastic on take that off so this is the double stamp set that's in the catalog currently and um, I fell in love especially with this tree here but these skeleton leaves are great as well well really that tree is too and so is this uh, I really like everything about it but we're going to use some big words and I wanted to use the you are wonderful so we need that and the other thing I forgot to tell you you need is some white embossing powder so when you're stamping onto your watercolor paper, you want to use a fair bit of pressure, but don't be very careful not to roll or uh, rock your stamp at all because we don't want any of the edges around the stamp. We only want the words. So we're going to sprinkle it with white embossing powder, which is going to be really hard to see. You can get a flick off a little bit if you want. I usually have just a dry paintbrush hanging around, and if I have any stray bits, I'm going to take them off with that. And then you're going to heat it up with your heat tool. So there we go. You probably can't see that all that much because it's white, pretty much on white. But it is melted on there fairly well. Just let it dry for just a quick minute. And this is where your uh, standard cutting mat is going to come in place. We're done with the Versamark so that can go aside and we're done with our stamp set. So decide on what colors you would like to use. Uh, you can use all of them if you want. I tend to like um, some more color family. So I tend to go with the green, the yellow, and the blue, or the red, the yellow, and the orange for most of mine. And I'll show you some samples at the end. So I'm going to put my uh, card this way, or my paper this way on my uh, mat. And I'm gonna pull off some um, paper and this sorry that's not paper that is actually painters tape and I am going to tape this down and I'm trying to leave the same amount of border as much as I can on the side because I want to use that border if I can in my card I'm gonna go all the way around with this Now the reason why we're putting it down onto a, a solid surface is that this paper, once it gets wet, is going to buckle a little bit. It will dry flat, so you don't need to use a, a solid uh, item in order to stick it to, but I find that I like the look of it a little bit better because when your paper is going to warp a bit, it's probably going to warp so that it's higher in the middle and lower on the sides. So your water and your color is going to leak out towards the sides. This helps it stay as flat as possible, even though there will be a little bit of warping. So I'm going to go with my blue, my yellow, and my moss green. And all you're going to do is take 
one, uh, take your push pin out and then you're just going to tap some of your color around on your cardstock, maybe a little bit more there. And one tap and that amount of powder is going to give us lots of color. My moss green. Now moss green is a really interesting color because it comes out um, green and sort of purpley and blue all at the same time. And then my yellow last. And yellow is one color that seems to go with everything, so I quite like using the yellow. These are going to last you probably two lifetimes, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we're going to spritz it. So we're going to spritz it with our spritzer tool just with uh, plain water. And I'm going to spritz directly down on top of it. And I'm going to give a fair bit of water because I want these colors to blend quite a bit. But I do still want to have some of these little um, cool little, I don't even know what, to, tendrils, I guess, of color in here too. So that's enough for now. Now I'm going to set that aside to dry. And dry time probably is, when it's taped down like this, probably is just a little bit longer, it seems, but probably about... I would leave it a good 40 minutes, uh, maybe half an hour, depending on the humidity in your area. Uh, but I have one already done for you. So we're going to put that one aside and I'm going to pull this one in, which is already dry. So I'm going to pull a piece of um, paper here, paper towel, because it doesn't always dry right on the masking tape. So I'm just going to take this paper towel and I'm going to get some of that color off. Now I'm going to lift up my um, masking tape and I want to be fairly careful when I said that the blue might work better. This is pretty tacky tape, this green, and so I am actually lifting up a very little bit of our water, my watercolor paper here. And so I'm just being very careful here. I try not to lift up as all of it if I can. So I'm getting a little more there than I would like. But I wanted to share this technique with you. That's my dog barking in the background. Sorry about that. I wanted to share this technique with you um, because I think it's really cool. And you can do a ton of these backgrounds in a really short period of time. Set them aside to dry. And you don't have to use this cutting uh, standard cutting mat. I found that it works great. Uh, just something, if you have something that is really solid, you're going to want to pull that out. So there, I have it all pulled off. And why I like using the masking tape too is you get a really nice border around it. So I'm going to take my paper towel again and I'm just going to give it a very light rub over top of the embossing powder because the, um, the crystal color will not dry completely on the embossing powder. Uh, it will turn into a powder, I guess, but um, because that's plastic, it's resisting it. So what you get is the resist of the embossing powder against the color. So I think that's really quite cool. So I'm going to just tidy this up and I'm going to pull in my uh, cardstock and we're going to finish up the card. Okay, so the other things that I need to finish off the card, you need some tear and tape because we want to use tear and tape on the watercolor, especially because it is, you can maybe see here, it is just a little bit warped. It's not completely flat. You could iron very carefully, not where the embossing powder is around it. I have never done that. I've found that it works just fine as it is. You're going to need some snail and I'm going to be using the, uh, the glitter dots out of the annual catalog. Now I pulled two colors of paper here because I wanted to see which one looked the best. We're going to go with a four and a quarter by 11 piece of Knight of Navy as my card. And then the yellow I've cut out is the pineapple punch. So that's one idea. And then the green that I cut out is the granny apple green. And I'm hoping to use the granny apple green. And I think I will because I want this to be more of a masculine card. So I'm going to go with Granny Apple Green, which is, uh, I think, my new favorite out of the, the catalog. Last year it was Lemon Lime Twist, and now it's Granny Apple Green. So you're just going to take your tear and tape, which is wonderful because you can tear it. You don't have to use scissors to cut it. Put that down all the way around. Give yourself a really good seal on your uh, watercolor paper. If you have any left, maybe just stick it in the middle. And then lift it off. If you have trouble lifting it off, I lift from the side. And if that's also a problem for you, then take your uh, paper piercing tool and just lift up the edges. And uh, that will be a handy, a handy way to get it off. So I've got one here that wants the whole thing wants to come off at the same time. So I'm going to go in with my paper piercing tool. 
And I even have some nails here, and this is one's being problematic. And this guy, and this last one here. Whoop. And that's what happens, so it's stuck right down. So I don't need to worry too much about that one. It didn't go all the way through the paper. I'm gonna put that down on top of my granny apple green. And my granny apple green is a piece that is four by five and a quarter. And as I said, that watercolor paper is um, three and three quarters by five, sorry. And now I'm gonna use my snail because the snail, this granny apple green is just a flat piece of cardstock. I'm not worried about putting that down and having it stick and it's centered right onto my Knight of Navy card. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a couple of the uh, uh, glitter dots, and they are Granny Apple Green. And I'm gonna go for a big guy here, and a medium one, medium one perhaps over here, and a small one maybe over there. And that's my card. So I want to show you some other cards that I've made, some other backgrounds. So this one here is also in the Rooted in Nature stamp set, this Thinking of You. And this is the Brilliant Red, the Gamboge, and the Yellow mixed together. And that's on Pineapple Punch and Real Red with a couple of our red rhinestones. Uh, this was my least effective, I think, even though I really love the background. And I think the re the problem with it is that I didn't have thick enough uh, embossing powder on there. And so some of the crystal color actually got into the little holes on the embossing powder. But this is the uh, blue, um, the, uh, mossy met the mossy green, rather, and the yellow as well. This guy I think I like the best, and I think it's just because of the brilliance. So even though I don't have a really thick lettering here, it seems to stand out really well against the uh, brilliant red, the gamboge, and the yellow again. And this one is just on real red and then on a quilt top embossed piece of Whisper White. So I hope you love playing with this technique as much as I do. You can make tons of backgrounds, and really it's very simple uh, embossing, and you can get a lot of cards done really, really quickly. All the supplies are in the description and you can click on them just to purchase them in my 24 seven online store. If you do like this video, please consider liking it below and consider subscribing too to my YouTube channel. I also have a blog at www.designwithjoe.ca and I post regularly and it would be great if you would join in. So thanks and have a great paper crafting day.